All right, so when you do your install, rotate the crankshaft so that it's at, at the bottom of the stroke, and then rotate your engine so that you have the bank facing upward that you're going to work with. Make sure you oil the cylinder walls. Coat the crankshaft uh, rod bearing journal with your engine assembly loop. Verify that your arrow is pointing forward. Verify that the large chamfer will be going next to the counterweight. And then you can set, start the engagement of the piston into the bore like so. Then you'll use your ring compressor. And when you're going through the process of capturing the rings and tapping it in, you'll develop a feel for what works best. For me, basically tightening this snug but not too tight is actually better than really tight. So make sure you place pressure to keep the uh, compressor down on the rings. And then you got to give it a tap. So basically we've got everything in except for the top ring, and you don't want to force it. It doesn't seem like it's going. Don't hit it too hard. And when you get to this position, sometimes when the only thing that remains is the top ring, it's easier just to hold it in by hand and put it the rest of the way. Now, we're going to rotate the engine again. And while holding this, we're going to install our bearing. You don't want to install it until now, otherwise the force of hammering will just knock it back out. So install the bearing, make sure you have the little detent in the groove. You have lubrication. And sometimes you can just pull it straight up, sometimes you still need to tap it. I don't have a good grip on it in this angle, so I'm just going to continue tapping. And guide it with your fingers. Then we'll install the bearing, the other side of the bearing into the cap. The cap is sided as well. Remember the chamfer we always talk about. And it'll have numbers on it as well, stamped, so that the caps are matched to the rods and the orientation of the caps are matched to be consistent with that chamfer. And we'll start this. All right, now you don't want to really pull in the bolts with Torx. The cap has um, two collars that will need to engage. So just hold both sides, tap, hold the piston from the bottom, tap from the top, and you'll see when the cap fully seats. All right, now we're going to torque it in three steps. Now, just in case there was any residual, you know, a little bit of binding, misalignment, or friction in the engagement of those collars, we're going to do it a second time. So we're going to rotate the engine around, excuse me, rotate the assembly, rotating assembly around, so that it has a chance to seat. Then, we're going to loosen it again and retorque it. This will allow any residual stresses or friction to release. Again, do it in multiple steps. Okay. So the rotating assembly is completely installed now. So, put it back up. This
This way. And rotate the engine around. And it should still be, I mean, you're going to need the ratchet to rotate it, but it shouldn't feel like anything's binding. And you'll see it, the entire assembly working as it should. Another thing you're going to want to check now that everything's installed, I mean, you can, I've already checked it when I wasn't recording. But you have side play here that needs to be present between all the rods. Use a feeler gauge. You want to have at least 10 thousandths of an inch of clearance between here so that these can rotate next to each other. If you have less than that, you can just take a flat piece of sandpaper on an anvil or block or something and take the rod and sand it. Um, use, you know, of course, varying grits and end on a fine grit so you have a nice surface when it's done. Another thing I want to point out before I move on is the, uh, the clearancing that we've put on the bottom of the cylinder bores. This is probably the best example, but you can see this rod bolt, when it swings down through here, it's going to go through this, this area here. So if I line up the camera and see that rod bolt right here, it's going to swing down into that where I've clearanced the bottom of the cylinder. And that's going to be the case for all the, all the cylinders. This is our girdle that we're going to install. And we'll loosen these and remove them, place the girdle on top, and then reinstall with our bolts that go in instead. Um, this girdle also has provisions for a windage tray, which will bolt to the girdle like this. That will reduce our high RPM oil sleeve losses. And then one other note is that if you are using a girdle, the pump, the oil pump slips in through here like this, like, like so. Um, but because of the thickness of the girdle, it may come in contact with the top of the pump. So you may have to remove material from the top of your oil pump here to make sure that it doesn't hit the, hit the girdle. Once this is in place now, you're going to want to make sure uh, before you even torque it completely, you can do this check, but make sure that everything clears in terms of the rods. Slowly rotate the engine around and check for any interference. You can see this is very, very close here. But it does clear. So if you had a slightly different rod combination, uh, manufacturer, you know, that might be a problem. So that's something you're going to want to check.